Welcome to a fine gaming experience, everyone. I am Brix, or as those on Something Awful know me, This Way Lies Madness. And today I wanted to share with you a classic game for the SNES released in 1993 that started Capcom's most successful RPG series, Breath of Fire. This game was also re-released later on the Game Boy Advanced, but I will be playing the original Super Nintendo version. There are very few differences between the two, but the music is a little bit better in this version. The game will be giving us a bit of a text-heavy intro in a little bit, so I'm going to try to avoid talking over it. But in future bits, when we are introduced to characters and similar, I'll be showing you some of their original character art and whatnot. Plus, there is a lot of history around this game you might not be aware of, and I'd like to share it with you. For example, if you notice at the very start of this video, Squaresoft is the company given first billing with their logo, while Capcom is shown second in a text wall, making it appear like this is a Squaresoft game. Capcom had a close relationship with them and asked them to help port this game to North American audiences. But they got a little bit overzealous and even stated in their own magazine that this game was from the creators of Final Fantasy. But for now, please enjoy the backstory of the first game of a series that spawned five more games and inspired many, many more.
So, there's the first start of our introduction, but we'll have more very soon. We'll hop on in and create our main hero, who is normally named Ryu in both the Japanese and North American Super Nintendo version. But oddly, the Game Boy Advanced has his default name as Zack. I'm given the option to set up my buttons since I've played previously, though your first play will have your X and Y, I believe, set to menu and item with no use of L and R. I'd rather not ruin the pacing of this next section, so I'll be saving some character art for the following episode. But for now, let's begin our quest and continue the introduction. Why do we have to wake up with fire? I'd rather wake up with coffee. Do we have coffee in here? A uh, vitality potion. Well, that's not what I wanted. Do you know where there's coffee? Don't run away. Oh, fire. It's like the building's on fire and it's spreading or something. But luckily, she knows the magic of bibbity bobbity boo to put that out. Although, apparently it's a one-time trick. Well, let's see how the rest of the village is doing here. For the time being, you say. And the fire doesn't seem natural. We're dragons, of course. People are safe here. The building's on fire. Are, are you sure? Esma. Okay, so that's the old woman over there. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Alright, we got some story here. Sarah, in the manual, is explained to be our sister. But I'm going to stay quiet here so we can continue with the introduction.
Well, that was a bit of an info dump for our first episode. Seems this goddess tier has been causing problems before, and we're hoping to repeat history in sealing her away. Our sister sacrificed herself to save the rest of the villagers, though I'm really not sure why the dark dragons didn't search the biggest building here. And everyone was willing to fight against all odds before we returned to stone. Now, old woman has a change of heart. This place will soon be in ruins. Well, it wasn't in ruins until she jumped. And the warrior of the dragon is a myth where I'm standing right here, lady. Well, at least the chief is going to help us out here. We'll get 300 GP to start off the adventure to help us out. And let's head on out to see how the uh, rest of the city is looking. Oh. Oh my. Well, at least this one building is intact. These are dragon shrines where we get to save our game, which we will do right now. Thanks for watching everyone, and see you next time when we find out what else the Dark Dragons have been up to. Take care.